Okay, we're here at game number two. White Raw. We're using the ID Tugload Raw. One of the sponsors. His sponsors. Uh, against uh, our other Ukrainian player, Straylock. We're deep here in the tournament. Straylock had a disappointing game in game number one. Uh, White Raw had good defense, was very deceptive. And I think the final battle was really sort of the big symbol of what went wrong in game one. He mm. ran in there. He didn't have the contingency plan. And he ended up losing. So from Straylock, we're going to have to see mm. a different game and a better game at that if he's going to come out here and defeat a player as good as White Rock. You know, everything went wrong for Straylock that last game. I don't think that that is very indicative of his play. So we should be seeing a better game here on Crossfire SE. I know Crossfire Taste is one of your favorite board games as a child. Yes, I was a professional Crossfire player before. Hungry Hungry Hippos. Did you have Stole my heart. cool leather gloves? I did. How do you, you play without a man? You want to get yourself hurt? What are you doing, dude? <laughs> you have any other foolish things you want to say on air to us? Now's your chance. I'm sorry. I, I messed up. I dropped the ball, too. <laughs> now, uh, if you are unfamiliar with our toasts and myself, we are professional StarCraft commentators uh, based in Seoul, Korea. We commentate the GSL. If you ever want to see more of us, check us out at gongtv.net. That's right. And follow us on Twitter. I'm Artosis. He is Call Me Tasteless. And follow IGN Pro League. Because guess what? They're going to keep updating you to some awesome games. And of course, Taste and I will as well. That's what we do, man. We are StarCraft guys. We love it. We love StarCraft. I love my life. Now here comes I love our... my life, and I love your life, and I love StarCraft. And I love all my little nerds at home watching. Yeah. Now here comes the probe from White Rock. He is the first to scout here. Yeah, he'll probably check to see if there's any gas is taken. Probably. Yeah. Now, probably won't kill that SMB, though. <laughs> probably not. Now, um, <laughs> oh, it never gets old. No, it doesn't. Uh, now we have the cybernetic score up and on the way here for White Ra. Uh, again, it's a one on one map. This map, if you notice, it's very uh, narrow and tall. Yeah. So it's, it's a map that you want to be very careful on because it's hard to sneak around your opponent, even though there's so many back doors. Mm. You know, one or two well placed observers or a scouting SCV or a good scan, even. And your position can be given away. It's also a map where you want to be very careful to not, for instance, uh, let the Terran or the Protoss, with Terran in this case with a siege tank, Protoss with a Colossus, get onto that high ground location outside of your natural expansion. Mm. You know, this is actually a map that a lot of Terrans choose to go siege tank marine on. Yeah. It seems like that is the one build that we see almost every pro game. A timing push with Siege and Green either before or after Exo, sometimes with Banshee, sometimes with not, but basically try to take the high ground and bunker push into the natural. Uh, of course, against that, Protoss kind of on this map kind of has to go Colossus. Charge Zealots aren't always going to be out in time, and there's not a lot of surface area in the right locations. So I would not be surprised if this game actually does boil down to that, as it has just been so popular on this map so far. We're going to see as time passes here. White Raw obviously going to be feeling pretty confident after that first game. Getting three gateways up now and Chrono boosting out Warp Gate. So he'll have a lot of Tier 1 uh, units, Stalkers, Zealots, Sentries early on here. Uh, meanwhile, over here in our Terran player's base, it looks like he's got a few Marines, about to have two Marauders, and a Heli in here. Interesting unit composition here. Yeah, very getting the uh, concussive shells. It looks like he definitely wants to put on some sort of early pressure, making another heli now. First one going out to see what he can see. And the three gate of White Raw will actually be suited perfectly to deal with this rush. Yeah, it looks like it here. The heli is now controlling the Zelnaga Watchtower. And here you can see the rest of Straylock's army is moving forward. There is a Nexus on the way. And... Strelk is moving up the map while making a starport, so it looks like he really wants to get some aggression going. Will that be for Banshees? Will that be for a Medivac? Not too sure, except I'm pretty well, sure it's not for a Viking. No, it's not for a Viking. I'm afraid not, Artosis. <laughs> uh, we are going to have to wait and see. There's a lot of different things you can do with this. Looks like he wants to try to run up the ramp. No, he does not. 
Backs up with the Hellion. Look at this. Ooh, blocking that from running away. Beautiful micro move there by Strahlock. Slows down the Stalker and kills it off. Makes the Nexus cancel. So this has been a pretty successful rush so far. Yeah, very successful. He's in control of what White Ra has to do now. White Ra already had to cancel. That's uh, a lot of minerals lost. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, Straylock's off to a good start. He's looking much better than he did in uh, the previous game. Yeah, the Cloak and Banshee on the way. A robe on the way for White Ra, though. So he should be pretty ready for that. And that's a big investment from Straylock to actually go for a Cloak Banshee while he is expanding. So uh, even though White Ra had to cancel that Nexus down, just stopping a Cloaked Banshee dead in his tracks is pretty valuable. It's an interesting move to go for the Cloaked Banshee. I think what he expects White Ra to do is to try to uh, shove his way back out, get mm -hmm. more gateways, push him his opponent out, and eventually get the Nexus. In which case, a Banshee would catch White Ra off guard and yeah. probably kill every single one of his probes, resulting oh, yeah, in checkmate, or as we normally say, GG. Indeed, tasteless. Uh, second bunker on the way. He is making, he has an Immortal out, and I like that Immortal actually quite a bit. Immortal's so good at breaking uh, bunkers at the bottom yeah. of a ramp, they do tons of damage. Also, of course, to the uh, to the Marauder unit as well. <laughs> and the Banshee, here it comes, Tasteless. We got a Banshee in here, uh, he's not really managed to do too much. Zero kills still, now up to one. Cloak not quite done, in fact, it looks like he canceled Cloak, so that's actually, I, I approve of that. He is making a Raven, though, and that Raven with point defense strong could be very problematic for the stalkers of White Raw. Yeah, you got that right, Artosis. Uh, this situation is just not good here. Um, you know, for him right now, this is getting a little bit a little bit sticky. Nobody's really safe having expansion up right now. Occasionally, mm -hmm. we get to these one-base races yeah. that you see in StarCraft 1 and 2, where it's like, well, one of us should expand, but... You know, if I do that, I could be in some trouble. <laughs> All right, here we go. Warp Prism coming out now. This is smart because uh, Straylock is containing yeah. his opponent. So that means he will not have uh, defending units at home. Yeah, he might not have too many. And if you can kill off a good number of SCVs, that's going to be quite nice. In the meantime, expanding behind the harass. A beautiful move. The basics of RTS by White Raw. And it uh, looks like he wants to take as many... SCVs as he can, attacking into the Zealots. I really feel like he should actually run away with those SCVs. The Marines are more than enough to actually clean these up with some decent micro. And Strzok actually ends up losing more SCVs than I really feel he should have yeah, there. He's down to 21 against 29 probes. Yeah, that's a pretty big difference. I think you're totally right. He did not need to attack that with SCVs. That's a StarCraft 1 instinctive move where you're basically going to uh, use those workers because in StarCraft 1, the um, attacking its AI prioritize the attacking unit first, besides an SCV. Now it'll take whatever attacking unit is closer. There you go. There you go, the man. man himself said it, so it must be true. Three more Zelts being warped <laughs> in. Thermal Lance just about done. That's going to allow him to punch out of those bunkers very, very simply. I mean, yeah. Look at this. Ready? Watch. Wait for it. There Here we, we are. And those are going to have to unload and run away. I mean, there's just there's no reason to keep up any longer. They contained them long enough. Strzok should feel pretty fine overall. You know, he lost a few SCVs, but other than that, he's done a good job this game. Ooh, yeah. I like that. He's actually, uh, he has some units up on the high ground so that his opponent can't run away. Yeah, this is pretty smart. Uh, this trap is going to change everything for Strzok. Because Strzok's suddenly like, oh, wait a minute. He thought he could get away with those Marauders and just have two more Marauders. No, man, not going to happen. Well, maybe one more unless that Stalker chases him down, but... Trying to salvage that bunker away, and down will go this Marauder. Not doing any real damage to the Stalker. And White Raw, he has his expand up and mining before Strelok. You know what? Uh, right now, uh, yeah, Strelok, he had somewhat of an advantage early on, but he wasn't able to capitalize on it. Mm. He should have known that White Raw would take the upper left location. It's uh, the most obvious move that you could do. And now we see, uh, here we see White Raw now moving out southward and mm. it's almost like two passing ships in the night man. Yeah. Oh no! He gets caught with that siege tank, a very important unit right now. And that is a scary army against so many marines and what is... Oh, the, well, not the greatest force fields, but still the army of White Raw is actually vastly superior. He's up 20 supply. And this is mostly just Marines stim just finishing now. Look at this, walking in the natural. This is gonna force Sherlock to turn around. No way he can do a base trade with this weird little army. 
walking right past that, and he gets that force nice. field off. One little force field, that's all it takes. Mm -hmm. That's going to slow down the Terran from coming back in there. And of course, there's also more of the force field to get on the ramp uh, inside uh, where the Terran's base is. Terran finally, uh, the force field is gone. He can actually do something about this. And that he will, he has some marines around the map. The Banshee's still just kind of sitting there, not doing anything. And there you go, the forest field up there. In fact, he's the Warp Prison to work in more units. Beautiful move by White Rock, the king of Warp Prisms. And Strahlock is just looking pretty dead, man. I actually, I, I know he cannot really kill this off. This is too many units in his base. Yeah, and with his production facilities surrounded, even though a drop over here is occurring in White Rock's base, it's not that impactful, it's not that important because uh, at the end of the day, uh, White Rock's production facilities are not under threat, unlike Strelog. So mm -hmm. he continues to make units. He still has a main base, yada, yada, yada. He's in good shape. Well, finally, the Banshee does come back down, and certainly it will start to get quite a few kills. This Nexus may, in fact, fall, but White Rock's in complete control. With Strelog barely mining just with mules at this point, 32 supply. Look at that unit count. Just absolutely nothing compared to the might of a couple Colossus and nine Stalkers with an Immortal. Beautiful. Well, this is getting worse and worse and worse here. And now you can see that White Rod's even managed to salvage his expansion. I think there's actually mm -hmm. no way physically possible for our Terra player to win. And I'm sure right now he's just digesting this loss, going over what exactly happened in this game. What can he do better next time? And uh, that should be GG any moment now. Yeah, man. Nice little immortal drop there. Going to kill off the last use of Strzok. And he's going to realize, uh-oh, in this best of five, I'm down 0-2. GG and shortly tasteless. On to game number three. Can Strella come back or will White Rock close it out?